All right. Uh, we have Brother Matthew yeah. here with us today. What's going yeah, on? Thank so you for happy. Yeah, happy to see you guys here. I'm living yeah. in South Korea. South I'm Korea. a Canadian. I'm a Canadian yeah. Jamaican living in South Korea. Yeah, yes, that's what you said. Yeah, to be exact. So, hey. Yeah, I'm yeah. The 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 this is yours, man. You run the show. So you tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, and and you know uh, some of the things you want want us to know about what the Lord is doing in your life. We need to fix our eyes on Jesus. Yeah, that's man. the secret. That's it. So, mommy, ask you a question, Brother Matthew. Yes. Yeah. You, oh, spoke yeah. about, you spoke about your involvement in the church message, in the in the health message, in your life as a missionary, and now you're living there, pretty much in South Korea. Yes. But before you you started all of this, what was your life before you met the Lord? What was how were you before you came in touch with the message of Jesus, to be exact? <clears throat> You know, um, I grew up in the I grew up in the Sunday Church mm -hmm. because my grandmother was a pastor and a principal. Mm. My grandmother was a pastor and a principal, so I grew up in the Christian in the Sunday churches in Jamaica, and uh, I so so um, so I. Maybe I think it was my teenager. I accepted Jesus in the Sunday church. I got I got baptized in the Sunday church. Wow. And then yeah, as a teenager like that. But from a child, I, you know, my grandmother is a pastor. So, but we I didn't go to my grandmother's my grandmother's church. I went to my father's church. Because my father was like a Pentecostal full gospel church was a part that was different from my grandmother's church. But my grandmother was also a principal like that. So, but I grew up in the Sunday church and you know, every day we need to get up and pray and worship like that. <laughs> so it was like that, you know, you, you know, sometimes we worship together with grandma, with my grandmother, but we, you know, like we have, my father has his own, own family. So, mm. I have to go to my father's church, not to my grandmother's church like that. But at the same time, I was going to a, a, a Catholic school. Mm. I went to a, a, prim, a Catholic, uh, what, what do you call it? A primary Catholic school, a Catholic, mm -hmm. primary, a Catholic primary school. Okay. So weekdays, I went to the Catholic school and I used to pray to Mary. Every day I used <laughs> to pray to Mary. It's still in my memory. You know, yeah, yeah. I used to the same thing. Still in, my memory, yeah, still in my memory, where I used to pray to Mary every day, Monday from Monday to Friday. You know, I went to the, the Catholic school and I used to pray to Mary. And so I actually, and then on Sunday, I usually go to my father's church, you know, the full gospel Pentecostal church. Mm. And so I grew up going to in the Sunday church. You know, from a child, I've never really heard. I've never heard about Seventh Day Adventists until um, how did it start? Okay, so I graduated from the Catholic school, and I went to a uh, public school. This was like a public school, but in Jamaica, the the public school was a little bit different. From the Canadian school, I went to a Canadian school too, but when I was in Jamaica, the public school was a little bit different from the public school in Canada. In Canada, you don't pray; you just study. You go to school and you study in Canada. But when I was going to the public school in Jamaica, before they start studying, we usually pray. Mm -hmm. This public school was a little bit different. It was a special school. I don't know why. I don't know why it was like that. But I remember when I went to the public school, before they start, they had to pray. We have to meet together. We have to pray and before we study. So wow. they have a, in that school. Oh, do you do you have any? In that school, they have a, a like a, some special group they call the Inter Christian Fellowship Group. They call it ICF. Mm -hmm. I think that I can't remember exactly, but maybe I think they call it that. So in this school, 
they call it in this group. The name of this group was the Inter Christian Fellowship Group, ICF. And before they start school, they usually use that group to do the worship. To they, they were students. The students were the were were the were part of this group. And in this group, um, the you know it was like a like a. You know, we they're Christians, all Christians from different center churches came together. Mm -hmm. Even seven adventists, everybody came together in this group. And after school, they usually stop, you know, usually meet together to pray, to study the Bible. And before before they start to study, they usually meet, you know, to run to do the, the, the school use this group to do the devotion in the morning before they study. So I was a part of that group. And so every year the, the president would be would graduate. So they have to choose another president to mm. be the president of that group. The name of that to be a president, yeah, to be the president for that group. So I was, they chose me to be the president because the the, the past president graduated. So they chose me to be the president. So my job, my responsibility was to do the devotion for the school before we actually start studying. So, um, so they chose me. So at the same time, I was studying accounting, studying business. I was, I was in the business department studying business because I like maths. My favorite subject was math. So <laughs> I wanted to, so I was studying business. I was studying accounting. So, um, they put me to work with a Seventh Day Adventist. <laughs> the the <laughs> person that was in charge of that business department, you know, she was a teacher. She she taught business. She taught business administration. So they they put me to work with her. Now mm. the school asked me to help with the cafeteria, like to do the accounting for the cafeteria and to help that person who was a Seventh Day Adventist because the person who was a Seventh Day Adventist. They put they use they asked her to run the cafeteria and to do the accounting, the book work, everything. So she, I, my job was to work with her. I was, she was actually teaching me accounting. I was yeah. trying to get the work experience in accounting. I was doing the, I was doing the accounting at the same time, working with her. And she was, you know, she was a seventh adventist. So I was working with her and usually I do the devotion in the morning, you know, every day. My job was to do the devotion before we start studying. So I remember one day she called me into her in, in she called me in in her office and she says, Sean, I like your zealousness. You know, I really admire your zealousness for Jesus. And then she shared the Advent message with me, the Bible message. You know, she saw she 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 told me, Sean, there's one thing you're missing. You need to keep the commandments of God. Mm. Is that you know, so remember now, I, I grew up as a Sunday church, never heard about Seven Adventists. You know, <laughs> and my 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 father was like very strict. We have to go to church on Sunday. You must go to church on Sunday. And you know, and you cannot miss church, you know, like we have to go to church on Sunday. Yeah. We have to. Even sometimes I don't want to go to church on Sunday. I have to go. <laughs> and you know, but so we have to go to church every Sunday. So we were very faithful Sunday church keepers going to church. Never heard about Seventh Adventists. <laughs> so this teacher shared the message about the Sabbath and said, you need to keep the commandments of God. I admire your zealousness for Jesus. And, you know, like that. But there's one thing you're missing. You need to keep the commandments of God. And I said to her, I am keeping the Sabbath. I work <laughs> six days. And I keep the seventh day. And then she then she explained to me, she said, she told me that the Bible says the seventh day, not a seventh day. Amen. Now. <laughs> so, so I couldn't argue with her. You know, when I meet her, I could not argue because she's using the Bible. Mm -hmm. She's using the Bible. So I can't argue. There's nothing to argue. You know, like. First Corinthians, was it first Corinthians or second Corinthians? I think second Corinthians 13, verse 8. It says, 
you can't do nothing against the truth. There's Don't nothing you can do against the truth. <laughs> you know, no matter how we we try to argue, all the people, there are two groups on the you on social media right now. One group they are trying to 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 you know to stand by the truth, to preach the truth, to share it. But the other group they are trying to twist it to to cover mm -hmm. it up, to fight against it, but they're just wasting their time. All right. <laughs> so who could it argue with her? She says, she, she, she says, the seventh day, remember the, the remember the seventh day to keep it, remember the, no, remember, remember the seventh day to keep it holy. Six days you shall work, but the, the seventh day, the seventh day. So for example, <laughs> the is a definite article. Yeah. If you study English yeah. grammar, V is a definite art article. So if I say, pass me the chair or that chair, pass me that chair, the chair, the apple, pass, give me the apple, the apple, you mean this apple. But if mm -hmm. I say, pass me an apple or give me an apple, it means any apples. Mm -hmm. You can give me any apple, give me an apple. But if I, if I said, pass me, give me this apple, the apple the apple or the chair or this chair this chair i need yeah. this chair only this chair mm -hmm. this definite you know or you understand what i mean so when the in the commandments <laughs> in the commandment it says remember the sabbath day to keep it holy six days you shall work but the seventh day <laughs> the seventh day exactly okay, the, this one yeah. specific yeah so she actually clarified that with me and said, okay, so, so I was thinking, oh, I'm young now. Uh, when I get older, then probably that time I can think about it. I can't do now because, you know, I'm young and, you know, my, we have, I have to go to my father's church, you know, my, Excuse me? Very, can I, you know, we're, we're, how old yes, were you? Go at, ahead. How old were you at this point? At this time, I think, I can't remember exactly, but this was at that, uh, it, it, this school was like a high school. It was like, because I graduated from the Catholic school, the primary school. So this was like a oh, high school. I, I was yeah. thinking it was college. So was when, okay. No, no, no. It was not oh. college. You see, uh, Canada, in Canada and Jamaica, their high school is very important. It's like, I noticed that, for example, there are not many people in Canada and, and, and Jamaica, like, they don't really have like a university degree, like many people, <laughs> like Korea. Korea, they focus more on having a university degree. Korea's, Korea, they put a lot of emphasis on education. Education is very important in Korea. It's like mm -hmm. an idol here, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know? But for Canadians and Korean, for Jamaicans and Canadian, high school is important. Like just if you have a high school diploma, you can get a work. Yes. yes. They have some, the, the high schools in Canada and Jamaica, they're designed to prepare people for the workforce to work. Got it. I, you, you have to understand that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so although I studied uh, I studied in high school in Jamaica. When I went to Canada, I had to re-study again. I, in high, I have to study again, study, study again in high school in Canada. But I didn't, I didn't really study everything. I, um, because I had good grades in Jamaica, so they actually transfer some of my credits, you know, and give me like that. But I re actually studied again in Canada in high school, study in Canadian high school. I studied there too. But the, the point is, yeah, I think I was a teenager at that yeah. time. I was a teenager. And, you know, so at that time, yeah, I was thinking, oh, I'm too young now. And mm -hmm. better later, later, I will think about it. No, not now. <laughs> and then I just forgot about it. She shared the message to me. I couldn't argue with her, but there was something there. She, I couldn't, I, you know, and so I just forgot about it. But the Lord continually, continually, I'm keeping, keeping meeting Seventh Adventists 
in a miraculous way. I don't know how. Let me, <laughs> let me give you another experience. So I just forgot about it and said, you know, yes, maybe when I get old, I will probably not now. So, and then the Lord, so another experience, how I became a seventh event. Usually after I finish school, the high school work, finish high school, I usually, there is a, there's a prayer room beside the high school. There was a prayer room be beside the high school. So after I finish school, I go there to pray. Just go mm -hmm. there. It was a Christian, there was a book, Christian bookstore and there was a prayer room. So after I finish school, I usually go there to pray, just to pray, spend time to pray. So I finish school, I go there to pray. I met the past president. Mm. This, he was the president before, he was a president for the Christian Fellowship Group. He used to do the devotion. He used to, you know, do the thing there. So I met him there. He was, he, I went there and met him, he was praying. And then, but to my surprise, he became a seventh Adventist. <laughs> Praise God. Because before I knew, he was a Sunday church, Believer, you know, he goes to church on Sunday. That's what I knew. But now he has changed. He's a Seventh Adventist. And when I met him at the prayer room, we had an argument over the Sabbath like that. Mm. And he was a young Seventh Day Adventist. Just yeah. became a young Seventh Adventist. Wow. And then, but this Christian bookstore, my favorite pastor was running the Christian bookstore. Because mm. the Christian bookstore and the prayer room were together, like they were like one place, one location together. So you can go to prayer, you can go to the Christian books and read the books, or you know you can buy Christian books. So my favorite pastor, Sunday Church pastor, was there. He <laughs> was the one who was running this Christian bookstore. My favorite pastor, one of my favorite pastors, Chris Sunday Church pastors. I really like this Sunday Church pastor because he he memorized the Bible. He knew the Bible very well. Mm. So I liked him because of that. And whenever the, the Pentecostal churches in Jamaica or the full gospel churches want to do some special program, they ask him to run it. They ask him to do it. Because this man was a special minister, special pastor. He knew his Bible very well. And, and they, they have workshops like they, he, he trained Bible workers for the Sunday church. For the Sunday church, he, he was a, like a teacher who trained. So, you know, I went to his workshop and he trained the teachers, Sunday church teachers. He was, that was his job. He was mm. training them and they go back to the Sunday school and taught work in the Sunday school. So I really respected this man and I really, you know, like him. But so I had, a, I had an argument with this, with my, with, I had an argument with with this with this uh you know this my the, my the person that this my past this person that i met at the prayer room you know he became a seven adventist and I, I had an argument with him i couldn't argue with him because he's using the bible <laughs> yeah. Again. he's using the bible and no matter how i my argument was not really was not you know I don't have a phone. I don't have a phone. I, I didn't have a foundation, nothing to argue yeah. from. So I called my, I saw my Sunday church pastor. I said, come over and help me. I want you to come and help me. <laughs> come over and help me here. Let's, 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 you know, let's quiet this seven Adventist. <laughs> let's silence him, you know, because so he came over, but to my surprise, he could not argue with the seven Adventists. Oh. Wow. <laughs> so was surprise, that a turning point? Was he, that a turning point for you in your perspective? I was or surprised. Still, we were still fighting. Yeah, I was very I was surprised. You know, he he had to admit that the Sabbath is the seventh day. And he he, wow. he, he told he, he admitted that he doesn't. He just stay home and fast and pray. Wow. Wow. You know, he, he stayed that's he, interesting you said yeah. this because there's a lot of Sunday keeping pastors, even Sunday uh, uh, Sunday church members, 
who are actually observing the Sabbath who are not in the Adventist church. Um, yeah. Some of them are keeping the Sabbath uh, on the seventh day. There are some who are calling, it goes back to what you were saying earlier, they are, they are picking other days of the week. And I look at it like, well, they're on their journey. They're not there yet. So they're picking other days of the week and they're calling it their Sabbath. So we, I, had a, I just had a, a reaction video of this minister that was just picking Monday. He was like, yo, on Monday, it's like, you know, like I can't violate this day because that's my Sabbath, even though he's got the wrong day, but the mm -hmm. idea is yeah. correct. So I was still thinking like, so a lot of people like are waking up to this reality. It's not something that seven divinists are yes. doing out of the blue. Like they like to call you a cult and yet like, no, this is actually biblical. Like people has been doing this for a long time. A lot of Sunday pastors, I'm telling you, they are keeping the Sabbath on a the low. <laughs> they may not be teaching it in their church, but they know it is the truth. Um, you know, and some I've heard cases where they said if they were to tell their members that they will lose their job and stuff like that. And uh, some of it is they're doing it because they just want to maintain their jobs and so on. But uh, this, the knowledge of the Sabbath is a lot more prevalent than most people think is it's all over the place. It's not, you know, it's not an Adventist thing. It's a biblical thing. I tell people it's Bible, you know. That's very true. You know, just forget about other religions, forget about preconceived thoughts and just go to the Bible, just the Bible. You're going to find the truth. You Very will find sad. the truth. Just stay with Very the Bible. Sad. But the problem with us, from a child, we have been educated. We have been with certain type. Uh, you know, we call it preconceived ideas. Yeah. Or defective reasoning. Yeah. Everybody has it. Everybody has this experience. Even pastors, when they come to the pulpit, they are bringing their experience with them in the sermon. And that's why we we need to personally meet Jesus and personally we need to be a student in the school of Jesus to be able to discern between the true pastors and the fake pastors. <laughs> you know, you have to study the truth, but we have to be students in the in the school of Jesus for us to understand this one. Amen. Now, but yeah, I was very surprised about that. He admitted I that the, the seventh day is a Sabbath. And um, he admitted, and he couldn't argue with the young Seventh Adventists. He could not argue with the young Seventh Adventists was using the Bible. Was yeah. using the Bible, you know. And I was surprised about that. And you know, like that, you know, he admitted, and he he stayed home and fast, fast. He fast usually fast and Sabbath, like that, fast and pray and Sabbath. Yeah, so that was my one of my experience. Another experience that I had, what other experience? Um, yeah, so, but although I had those experiences, still yet, uh, it was there, but I, I was thinking maybe later I will probably, you know, do this. Not now, you know, because I, I grew up in this center church family, so, you know, my father, we have to go to church on Sunday and you can, you know, and at the same time, they, I was like, uh, also I was, they chose me to, yeah, I was like, uh, the, the Sunday church asked me to be a, like a youth leader in the Sunday church. I was a, like a youth leader there. And I, but at the same time, God was teaching me these things. God was leading me step by step to the truth. And then another experience I had, what, a, what a other experience? Uh, another experience that I had was, yeah, I went to the pastor, the center church pastor, to the church where I was going, to my father's church. So I went to the center church pastor and I said, oh, what do you think about seven Adventists, you know? And the center church pastor told me, Stay away from Adventists. They are cults. <laughs> Stay away from them. Wow. They are cults. The that's law that, is done away with. That's that buzzword. <laughs> yeah, wow. the law is done away with like that, you know. We don't need to keep the commandments of God. So that means we you, can lie and steal. <laughs> how did you respond to that remark? He was my Sunday church pastor. I've never heard about seven, seven Adventists. I had to just trust my pastor. He's my pastor. We I grew up in that church from a child. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. So this is yeah. an experience before the woman at um your high school told you about the Seventh Day Adventist. This is after. This oh, is it after. is after. After, okay. yeah. Because remember, I had the experience with the teacher. Yes. And I had the experience with that with that past with the, the past president of the school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then. But I went to the Sunday church. I went to my pastor in the Sunday church, and I, 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 I was asking him about this, about Seven Adventists, you know, and what do you think about Seven Seventh Day Adventists? And, uh, but this was his response, you know, stay away from Seven Adventists. They are cults. The law is done away with. You know, we don't need to keep the commandments of God. And I was, you know, but, you know, I was thinking, oh, yeah, so that means we can kill and steal, you know, if you don't, you know, mm -hmm. I wonder why the crime rate in Jamaica is so high. <laughs> and the crime rate is so high in many countries because you have these pastors teaching that we don't need to keep the commandments of God. Mm -hmm. you, you understand like that. So, but still yet, I was not fully convinced. Mm. Mm -hmm. I had the head knowledge of the truth. It was there. Mm -hmm. But the Lord, you know, Jesus never gives up on me. Right. He's always step by step leading me step by step, tr constantly trying to teach me his way, trying to lead me to the right path. Mm. Mm. And then, uh, but the, what really um, convinced what was it the, the thing that really uh uh caused me to come to seven adventures let me explain what happened now my father uh travels you know my father usually traveled to he traveled to other countries sometimes my father goes to england to work canada different places america many places my father traveled so my father was traveled to 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 canada to work and to live there in Canada. And then my father has two houses in Jamaica, you know, so one house he rented out, you know, to, you know, and the other house, you know, we can just, the children just live there. So, um, so I have like, I have how many, what do I have now? I have like, um, how can I say? Okay. So, so my father went to travel to work and live in, in Canada and um, live in Canada. And um, so I was, you know, I just was living in Jamaica with my brother, you know, and we just lived together. But so there was an uncle, my mother on my mother's side, there was an uncle. And my, my uncle was living in the countryside. But this uncle, I like this uncle because my uncle was into, he was very smart. You know, he was a builder, he could build houses and he was into Chinese martial arts. He was into Kung Fu. So I like the Kung Fu thing, you know, I was, you know, the, I like the Kung Fu martial arts, those things. But the thing that I knew about my uncle was my uncle couldn't read and write. Because whenever I visit my grandmother's house in the countryside, one thing I knew about my uncle, he couldn't read and write. And the only thing I knew about him was he liked to smoke the marijuana and drinking and Kung Fu fighting. That's the thing I knew about my uncle. But my, my uncle became a Seventh-day Adventist. Wow. Yeah. My uncle became, became a Seventh-day Adventist. I don't know when. And how, but my uncle became a Seventh Adventist. And he was living in the country. He was a farmer living in the countryside. And I was living in the city. I grew up in the city, living in the city. So I, I told them, why don't you come and live with me? You know, live with me, come and live with me here, you know, like that. So he decided to come and live with me and but to my surprise 
He was a Seventh Day Adventist. <laughs> he was a Seventh Day Adventist. Oh my goodness! To my surprise, he knew more Bible than me. He could read and write. Before I knew him, he couldn't read and write. Wow. I'm serious. But he wow. knew more Bible than me. I grew up in the Sunday church. I thought I knew the Bible very well. I won all the quizzes in the Sunday church. <laughs> I won all the quizzes. I thought I knew my Bible very well until <laughs> I met Seventh Adventists. <laughs> my Bible ability, my Bible knowledge was very low. Yeah. <laughs> But, but the thing that really caused me to fully convince about this was the experience of my uncle. I, 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 because I'm looking at some real thing, real thing here, real change here. Mm -hmm. Yes. He couldn't yes. read and write. Mm -hmm. And then to my surprise, he knew the Bible more than me. He could read and write, became a seventh Adventist. He knew the Bible more than me. <laughs> He stopped smoking the marijuana. <laughs> Stop drinking. Praise the Lord. I have that a question. Was the thing that, huh? Did he ever preach to you, or was his lifestyle enough to give to for you to have this sudden change of and this impact? Both. Both. He was preaching, but his lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two things I saw. Two things I saw. He practiced and, and preached. <laughs> yes, two things. I was really amazed. That was a thing that uh, that really caused me to fully convince. And the question he asked, this was a question that really gave that really, you know, that that this was it that actually why i because i got i i was baptized in the sunday church you know i was baptized in the sunday church but the question that he asked was this that really caused me to just said you know i have to i have to follow jesus i have to, by his grace i need to keep the commandments of god what was this was the question the question was was in john 14 verse 15. I don't know if I can share my screen with you. Yeah, you I can. I don't know if you can share. Where where do I do where do I see share your screen? Where yeah, it, because it there's says a present. It says there's a little uh it's like a plus sign that says present. If you click that and you say share oh, screen. Yeah, plus. Okay, yeah. Okay. Let yeah. me click that. Plus. Okay. We plus. recently taught our son that wait, verse. Wait a minute there. Okay, wait. <laughs> Pardon me? We recently taught our son that verse. Yeah, sure, screen. Do you love me? I'll let you finish it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's good. yeah, that's very good. Very good. That that's very good. Yeah, so while, you add it, while you add it, easy to while you're looking to share your screen, I'm not gonna make this testimony about me. Yes. This is your time. I, I was raised Roman Catholic, and and when we were in Haiti. We knew, we knew not to mess with Seven Day Adventists. Like we will make fun of them because they will, we will say they will eat leftover food because they don't cook on the Sabbath. So we will make fun of them going to church on Saturday, but we will never dare to sit down and have a Bible study on the subject. <laughs> we we knew not to do that. Really? Like, don't 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 have a study on yeah. this, but let's criticize, let's make fun of them. Yes. So even though I knew that. It was pretty amazing because yes. I knew this since I was a Roman Catholic that you can't really debate a seven divinist on some some of their belief system on their belief system because we knew that we were in error but we hated the fact that these people had the truth and they were like they were like annoying you know but uh, over time when I begin to study myself I begin to realize you know okay. what I need to be a hypocrite because these people were telling the truth so yeah go ahead <clears throat> yes. Yeah, you can see here, this was the verse that really uh, gets to me like that. John 14, verse 15. Can you see the screen there? Can you see the no, screen? I cannot. I cannot. I can put it up on my screen if you want me to. Oh, you cannot see? No. Oh, okay. Um, maybe I stop share screen then. Wait, wait. Let me see if I can stop share the screen. Is it your browser has blocked the screen? Oh, you can't. Okay. Yeah, for the so browser, you... let me just... I'll put it on my screen. You tell me which one you want. Oh yeah, John 14, verse 15. There you got it. John 14, verse 15, okay. 
Yeah, John 14, verse 15, it says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Praise God. This was the question. Simple. This was the question that my uncle asked me. Do you love Jesus? Mm. This was the question that caused me to, to give up the Sunday, the Sunday church gospel and follow and, and join the seven Adventists. This was the question. If you love me, keep my commandments. Mm. This was the, the question. You know, and people don't understand this. This is a, this is a big problem. You know, God wants our love. But God, God will not force it from us. Mm -hmm. God's not going to force it. The problem with us, people don't understand that love has to be two-way. Mm -hmm. It cannot be one way. Let me give an example. I have a Jewish friend in Canada. You know, and, uh, and whenever we meet together, sometimes maybe online, we argue for a long time. We have argument. But he's like a Messianic Jew. He, you know, he speak, he, he doesn't really accept the Seventh Adventist Church, so we have argument. But he's a Jew. And but we are friends, we're friends, we're good friends, you know. I long time ago when I was in Canada, you know, we usually come he come over my house and you know we had a good time together like that, but we are good friends like that. But sometimes we have long argument, but although we disagree, we're still friends. Amen. But the other day, I think the other day I spoke to him and he he told me that he, you know, he was dating this girl. He was dating this girl. But the, suddenly the girl turned against him and, you know, he had a, some bad experience with the girl. Girl is, is, you know, saying bad things about him. And then he, he, he thought the girl loves him. <laughs> he thought. And I told him, I, I tried to explain to him that love has to be two-way. I said, you gave your love to that girl, but that girl didn't give you her love. Mm. It has to be, it's, people don't understand. In, the, in many churches, we say, oh, Lord, I love you. I love <laughs> you. But reality. many people, yeah. in the reality, they haven't given their love to God. And mm. God is not going to grab it. God is not going to grab you, grab it, and say, "Give me, you, give me, give me love." Mm -hmm. We have to give it freely because, you know, one thing I really like about um, the our the seventh event, the messenger of the Lord, we have a prophetess in our seventh Adventist church, and she was the one who actually developed the message of love. I have never heard. You know, I have people, many people talk about love, many Christians, but they don't really, on the, they don't really talk about practical love, practical, oh, real yeah. practical love. The only person that I, uh, that I know that talks about the, that gave a best, excellent, a, a best, ex, uh, what can I say, expl Excellent. explanation about love that really talk about practical love is the prophetess, the messenger of the seven Adventists. That person, the, the messenger, messenger of the Lord, she gave a very good ex, 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 explanation, a good cl clarity. She clarified love because mm -hmm. in the Bible, they talk about love, but the Bible doesn't really like give more. There are, we see different pictures, different stories of love in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And Jesus gave the best uh, uh, demonstration of love when he died on the cross. But there's more to it. You know, mm -hmm. there's more. There's more to this word love. If you love me, keep my commandments. But when you read the spirit of prophecy, the testimony of Jesus, when you read, when you really study her writing very well, she's the, she's, I, I could say she's the, if you read other books, there are so many books that they talk about love. You mm -hmm. know, many, even the movie, the music, so many music, so many movies, they talk about love. 
You go to mm -hmm. you watch the movie, they talk about love, but their love is cheap love. Yeah, cheap love. It's not the real love. <laughs> and their love is talking about lust. Because many people confuse lust and love. You know, and, and the divorce rate is so high in Korea right now, and in America and Canada and all over the world, the divorce rate is so high because many people, many marriages is not about love. It's about bed, money. And what else? Bed, money, and and lust. Mm. It's not right. about real love. Many marriages, the foundation is not on love, like true love. It's on just money. Many marriages, it's just about money. <laughs> you know, if you have money, it's the, it's like these days, marriage is just like a business, like money. It's not about mm. real love, like. You know, but then Jesus says, if you love me, mm. keep my commandments. And then my friend, my Jewish friend experienced, you know, I said to him, I told him, this was the thing that opened his eyes. Because he seemed like he was, because he was blinded, thinking that that girl loved him. But I said to him, I told them that you gave your love to that girl, but that girl didn't give you her love. Mm. So, so you see, so with God, we God wants our love, but He's not going to force it. We need to give it to yeah. Him. Exactly. Yeah, praise God. Because God, yeah, God has given His love to us. <laughs> we every Amen. day I wake up, I see God's love. Man. Yep. I was thinking about light. Just mm. imagine there's no light. Just imagine mm. there's no light. What's going to happen to us? There's no life. You understand? We can't be healthy. There's no food. We, we're going to be, you know, you understand what I'm saying? That's the love of God. But the person that really developed this message of love is, is the messenger of the Lord, this, you know, of our seven, the prophetess of our seven Adventist church. She was the one who really explained this very well, that really clarified in my brain. Love has to be given freely. We cannot force it. Understand, many mm -hmm. governments around the world, all over the world, they want to get the obedience. They want to get obedience from, from their citizens. Mm -hmm. They want the people to obey the law, to keep the law. But they are using force. They have to use force. They have to use coercion. They have to use some different methods to try to get the people to obey the law, to keep the law. But with God, God is not like that. No. Nope. God is not going to force us. You know, he wants us to obey him, but he's not going to force. Love has to be freely given. Mm -hmm. So this was the thing that caused me to say, you know, I have to st stop. I have to, by his grace, not by my, I cannot keep the law by myself. That's why yeah. I pray. I'm praying every day. Lord, keep it because I can't keep myself. And the good news is, the, the good news, the everlasting gospel, you know, that yes. Jesus promised to help us if we are willing to give that will to him, to give, to willing to open our hearts and to let Jesus come in and take our and hold our hands, you know, and he's, he promised to help us. He's there. He promised to help us to keep the commandments. That's his yes. job. Yeah, <laughs> I cannot keep the commandments by myself. Every day I need Jesus like that. Amen. So that I was just the wanna, thing that really. I just want to say so I I, I just love how you said that. That's his job. You know, when we sometimes look at God, we feel like we have to do these things in order to stay in line. We have to do give give ourselves to Him, like mm -hmm. you said, give mm -hmm. our complete sacrifice. Yeah. When you were saying, you know, it's our job to just let him have all of us. Yeah. And when we realize that and that it's God's job then, and he wants us to really literally, I love that verse that you quote sometimes where the kingdom of heaven is like, you know, what verse I'm talking about where you have to literally extract from heaven, like mm. pull down God's blessings. Oh, pull you're talking about uh, the one John the Baptist. Okay. How's it? The kingdom of heaven suffer violence and yes. the violent take it by force. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's like when we put ourselves in God's hands and allow him to do his work, mm -hmm. his job, his let him be 
who he who he desired and designed himself to be for us. Wow. Beautiful. You know, it's something that you can't get it you just can't you can't put it in words, you can't articulate it, but you start to see your life get paved in these different ways. Things happen, doors open, doors close, yeah. but it's because you've allowed God to be God in your life and you've given yourself to him and mm. allowed him to just uh to to keep you in his love mm -hmm. and to pour his love in you so you've accepted it by grace accepted yeah. it by faith that grace of god and then you just allow him to perform his job <laughs> in yeah. our lives i think it's just it's such a powerful thing but we yeah. get sidetracked or we want to do things our own way or think we might know a little bit different or a little bit better or god let me help you help me <laughs> and god is just like just let me be god let me do what my job is and ex imagine the fruits that you'll experience so yeah. I love but that. Matthew, I love the emphasis you placed on uh, love as the foundation mm -hmm. for obedience. Because the thing is, if the love, if love is at the heart uh, of why we do what we do, why we obey the voice of the Lord, then obedience becomes a joy. Because whenever we feel like yes. we have to obey or we fighting against God, for example, like you spoke about the significance of the Sabbath, and I always think I'm like. Do you love the Lord? Like, don't you want to spend time with the Lord? Don't you want to meet with him on the day that he set apart? Like my wife and I, we like talking like about dates and I'm thinking about our anniversary is coming up soon. What am I going to do? Like, I want to be with the one that I love is like the Lord set apart seven day of the week for love communion with you because he loves you and he doesn't want you to pick a day he already picked the day he's the one who set the table he set the day he's the creator of the world he set apart one day where we can meet with his with his creatures and then we say oh we don't want no sabbath i don't care about the sabbath he's like do you love the lord don't you see the heart of god it's not about a seven divinity thing it's about God willing to spend time with you. It's about God willing to yes. pour out yes. his love into your heart. Mm -hmm. Why would you reject that if you're a Christian? And some people don't realize that's what they're doing. But I'm like, you're rejecting spending quality time with your heavenly father and you're fighting against me. It was telling you, God wants your heart. He wants, your, he wants to fill you with his presence on a seven day. Yes. Don't miss that. It's a beautiful thing. It's like the world has us tricked into being so busy, yes. yeah. burdened, under yeah. burdened under Satan's yoke, yeah. that you begin to think like, oh, I can't shift my day. I definitely can't change my day. And so you're so inundated with this thought of like, oh, so what you do is you just reject it on the premise of, like my husband was saying earlier, you're making fun, you're this, you know you can't contest the, the truth. You know you can't fight against it, but just for the mere fact of, because when it, when you love God and you keep his commandments, it requires a lifestyle change. But what people think is some, like I said, it's something they have to do, but you don't realize once you receive that, mm -hmm. I look forward to the Sabbath. I'm like, oh man, I'm not really excited about summer because the sun doesn't go down yeah. until <laughs> late. So what happens is my body reacts to try to do more and more and more and more until I get the, to the cusp of sunset. But then I'm telling you when sunset hits, it's like, there's an experience when yeah. you honor the Sabbath and want that communion. So now that I honor the Sabbath, I keep asking God to make it more intimate because it's just like a love day. Someone explained it to me like it's a date with God. Yep. And I think it's such a beautiful yes. time that people don't know that they need to restore, to refresh, to rejuvenate, and to just oh, receive. Oh. It's like every Sabbath lately, I have been asking God, to enhance whatever I've been studying, whatever I've been reading and, and going over. And I'm telling you, he has answered through the Sabbath on the Sabbath day, just putting like the cherry on top of whatever my devotions or whatever my struggles or conflict or joys, he's just put a cherry on top every Sabbath. And if people would just experience and, and enjoy and understand that the Sabbath is a gift, mm -hmm. then, oh, wow. The, 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 like you like you're talking about, it's just something, there's a love that is poured out from heaven that you can't get on another day. You can't get without entering into that beautiful covenant that's not, it's not grievous. It's not burdensome. Nope. It truly is a gift. Freedom. I always think about the Ten Commandments and I say, they give you the ability to reach your highest potential, mm -hmm. right? They give you the ability to avoid, God is uh, using them to allow you to avoid 
those things that are harmful. Like, so when you look at, if you're going to look at the fourth commandment of uh, resting on the Sabbath day, that's not just a day for you to, mm -hmm. not only do, do you commune with God, but your body is resting, your mm -hmm. mind is resting. So there's so many health benefits that come from this. Your relationships are going to be better because of this. Your self, um, you know, people are always talking about self-care. You're going to be able to care for yourself. Like there's so many valuable valuable things that come out of honoring God's Sabbath day that are just mm -hmm. components of your relationship with God getting stronger, mm -hmm. but it, it, it's so much more. It's physical, it's mental, Beautiful. it's emotional, it's spiritual. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it covers every facet of mm -hmm. our being. Powerful. So sorry, but yeah, it's, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> the commandments, it's all about love. Yes. Yes. You know, they are teaching us to love. And the substance of the Ten Commandments is relationship, love relationship, mm -hmm. the substance. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up, you know, I go to the church, you know, I, um, I, I'm live, I'm going to the Korean church. So they usually preach in Korean. So you cannot understand, they don't preach in English. So, you know, my Korean ability to hear Korean is I can understand what they're saying. But in the church, we have many uh, old senior citizen, older people, and I understand them. They don't understand the message. Many of I, I I worship with them, but I can see that many of them they don't, or some of them they don't understand the message. But they come there. They come and but one thing I see was, yeah, people ask me, who are you? Are you a missionary? But I let them know. I'm not a missionary. I'm your family. I'm, a, I'm your brother. Yeah. That's how I see myself all the time. People always ask, are you a missionary? I said, no, I'm not a missionary. I'm your family. We are brothers and sisters. Amen. That's how I see myself. You know, yeah. every day people, I don't want to think because we as we human, we love to put people in some groups, like group them in. Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. then I think that's a type of Phariseeism. And mm. sadism like that. We love to do that. It's just a human nature. Mm -hmm. But I want relationship. I don't want just to have the rules. Because when you read the spirit of prophecy, she emphasized the importance of relationship, not just rules. Mm -hmm. Just having the rules. We love to, on Sabbath, you know, everybody has a front. But God wants relationship, not just to have a front. Mm -hmm. Not just to keep the letter of the law. God wants relationship. That's more important to God. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the God I serve was like that, you know, and it's all up. That's why I'm saying the commandment is all about love, mm -hmm. love yeah. to God and love to one another and love glues everything together. Yes. You know, you know like when we look at some of our most important earthly relationships, you see how they invigorate your soul, right? They invigorate your livelihood and they cause you to have better days at work you are you eat healthier you do different things so and that's where building that relationship with god <laughs> affects every aspect of your life every. we can look at our are the states of what when you're having uh when your relationship is in conflict you can see how you are more tired you're more agitated you're more prone to make inappropriate decisions or decisions um without thinking about them, you, mm -hmm. you're not being prudent anymore. So it's an understanding the value of a deep and intentional relationship with God and how that has so much impact on every area of your life. And so that's that relationship. Mm -hmm. And so I love that you said that because so many people are focused on the rules of the Ten Commandments. Like, mm. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. My life is going to be so boring. Mm. No, your life is going to actually become fulfilled. Yeah, You know, it's like, like he, he came to fulfill you and to make you feel fulfilled and just to reach your highest level of self on this side of heaven. Amen. And that's in relationship with him. And it affects <clears throat> every relationship you have with others. It's just beautiful. Relationship beautiful. Is, is so key. Yeah. God is love, somebody said. That's right, brother. Sure is. You know, as you were saying, you were still talking about how the commitments are love, right? The commitments are all about love. And it's true because you're opening my mind to seeing it differently. Uh when you look at the law, for example, like uh, oftentimes when we read the Ten Commandments in Exodus, we just jump into thou shalt have no other gods before me. But actually, there's a precursor to the law, which is where it says, I am the Lord, your God, 
who who brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage, right? So it's like, what does that actually mean? I'm the one who saved you. I'm the one who set yeah, you I'm free. I'm your savior. I'm your savior. I'm the one who set you free. I'm your lover. I love so, you. Yeah, yeah. I love, you. I love you. So once you understand, oh, that's the reason why he can say, you should have no other God before me, no other gods before me. Why should I not have no other gods before him? Because he loves me so much. His love for me compels me to put him above everybody else. So it's not like God is being this arbitrary, you know, law giver who is like, you better do this or you better do this. That's not the point. God is saying, you should have no other gods before me because I love you. You should not take my name in vain because I love you. You should honor the Sabbath because I love you. So it's like when love motivates you to obey, you understand like, oh, this is not about controlling me. Mm -mm. This is not about governing me. This is actually about freeing me mm -hmm. and bringing me back to what you said, Brother Matthew, into a love relationship. Mm -hmm. It's always been about that. And sometimes we miss it because we get caught up in the rules and the regulation, the do's and the don't. And we miss the mark that the Lord is just trying to, he just want to love on you. Mm -hmm. And he wants you to experience the, the, the depths of his love by, by a life of obedience as well. So it's like the, point. he's giving you the, the, the blueprint of a perfect love relationship. Yeah with him mm -hmm. and with others so it's like the standard of living and that's what's going to keep you from having all the ill effects if you do not if you go outside of that standard of living yeah so it's just like that's that perfection of love that he wants to pour on us in our human capacity that we can receive it like wow powerful, powerful. you know i have many lessons because i have i wish that when you have time we can do some studies together Oh, sure. We the can. more I study with, the more we do study together, the more the Lord give me more information. <laughs> iron sharpens iron, Spirit, right? <laughs> yeah, the Holy Spirit gave me more and more and more. Yeah, you know yeah. the Bible is so deep that when I take one verse, it 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 open to more things. Yeah, because That's if great. you think about it, Paul, the Holy Spirit. You know, think about it. In the Old Testament, they had the Old Testament Bibles, the thirty-nine books. And when and Jesus came, Jesus came down. Jesus came down here. And then Paul met Jesus. Paul, the apostle Paul met Jesus. Jesus went back to heaven. The apostle Paul met Jesus. The apostle Paul got the revelation about the love of Jesus. He got the revelation about the love of Jesus. And after he got that revelation, you know what happened? Uh, Apostle Paul used all those 39 books and develop something more beautiful. So the largest part of the New Testament is the writing of the Apostle Paul. And it's all about love. The Apostle Paul just takes those very 39 books and develop it in something more powerful, the powerful gospel. When you read the New Testament, you see the power of the gospel there. That's why Paul said in Romans 1, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but it is the power of God to those who are being saved. Amen. Apostle Paul took the, the Old Testament and developed, take, you know, it's like we have 26 alphabets in the English language. But those 26 letters, we have so many words, millions of words, trillions of words from those we from those 26. I think the commandments on one side, it has the letter, but the other side, it's deep. Yes. And the oh, Bible is like the Bible is like a fountain, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, when you but open the Bible, we can go on. Yeah, go ahead. Yep. And I know we're going to have some plans because we need some of that wisdom on the channel. And I, I know you and I did talk and we, yes. we're going to schedule another yes. time and where you, you will be able to come with your Bible study and you can fill our hearts with, with some wisdom. Yes. Uh, but I also, yeah. uh, my question now is, uh, what are you doing now as part of your ministry? Because in the next five minutes or so, we have to wrap it up. It, what you're doing now as your personal yeah, yeah, ministry, yeah. Okay. Let me, uh, how, how, how can people find you? Do you have a channel or anything like that you want to share with people that are watching that they can get in touch with you as well? Yeah. Yeah, I have this channel, but I want to share my screen to tell you how can I 
Okay. But again, oh, the, oh, they're blocking me like that. Yeah. Okay, so uh, um, I'm I know I'm not blocking you, but it's uh, I... wait, 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 wait a minute. Let me see if I can bring. Oh yeah, no, not you. You're not blocking me, but the I think my the Chrome is trying to block me here. Yeah, the maybe because I need to remove some security thing. That's why. You do. Not you. You're not blocking me. Let me see if I can try to share again. Let me see what's what's gonna share your screen. Um, let me share my screen. Okay, share. Let me try again. I'm just trying again. It says allow Streamyard to see your screen. Oh yeah, yeah you press allow. Okay. Please allow. Let me see. Oh, I can see. Now, can you see my screen? No, cannot. Yeah, we, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute there. Okay, let me show you. You can you see my screen now? Uh, can you see my no. screen? I cannot. No. Oh, you can't see my screen. Wait a minute. Sure. Yep, not yet. Just a moment. Okay. Yeah. Okay, it's frozen. Yeah. Can you see my screen now? No, we cannot. It's not allowing us. Let me see if I stop my screen to see if yours will work. Can you try again? Okay. Okay, wait, wait. You cannot see. Okay, okay. That's the thing. Okay. So, um, I have a YouTube channel, so maybe what I can do, I can send you the link of the YouTube channel. You can try another browser. Um, if you uh, instead of using Chrome, trying to use Google, uh, what are you using now? Using Chrome, okay. Sometimes it's the browser that you're using that's blocking you. Um, if you move okay, to a different, you, let me let me try to use this one, okay? Yeah, yeah, let me try this one. Wait a minute. Yeah, we'll wait yeah, for wait you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute here. Wait. Can you see my screen now? Nope. Wait just a moment. There you go. Oh, that means I need to log in. Oh, that's the other way. Yeah. Oh, it's loading like that. It's slow. Okay. Uh, Roke, Roke said if you use Firefox or Edge, that those could work. Yeah, I don't want to spend uh, what I can do. Just let me just, you know, probably have to go. I don't want to spend too much time here. But yeah. let me explain. What you can do is like this. Um, I think you should just, uh, I will send my link tell to me. you. I will, yeah, I will tell send me my the YouTube link. Website. Okay, go ahead. Send it to me okay, in the private let me chat. Tell you the name of my. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That that's the best way. Let me see if I can copy it for you. Click here. Okay. Let me say yeah. That's good. That's I send it to private. And you, I think that's the best way. Wait just a moment. Let me just paste it here. I send it the link. Can you click on the link and tell me if you get it? And probably can share it for me. Uh, uh, I just okay. send the link for you. Got click it. on it and share it for me. I got you. All right, yeah, here we are. Yeah. Yes. So this is my YouTube channel. You know, my YouTube channel, I focus on, you know, I'm an English teacher, so I focus on teaching English to Korean students. So that's one section. The other section is I'm trying to make some health video. I want to focus on health. Um, I want to focus on organic farming, do organic farming and health, how you can use the food the herbs naturally to be to get healing mm. you know i i have many allergies because i grew up i i don't think i have a good dna but the lord has been teaching me how to use the herbs how to use the food naturally to get healing without you depending on doctors i don't take drugs and those things and i just follow god's method and when i'm sick you know i just use god's method and i'm okay it's so, large. so I, that's why I wish I could, I'm, I'm, my dream is to have a sanitarium in the countryside. I wish I could have so many, sanit like have house sanitariums, you know, 
like if I go back to Canada, I wish like you have so many house sanitariums and I could show them what they do in Korea because Koreans, they have it. And then so the church members, when they're sick, they can go to these sanitariums instead of depending on the those hospitals, those public system. These are very, these are the, you know, so I'm trying to make some health video, not yet, but I'm trying to work on, work on different videos. But I'm trying to make like one section for English for my English students because I'm I have many English students and they want to focus on English, but I want to give them something better. I want to give up talk about the health, the health message. Amen. And I want to have a section for organic farming. And that's what I want to do. And I believe, you know, the Lord is trying to lead me to in this area to spend more time to make YouTube channel to give the message for this time, the three angels messages. So I want to focus more on that. So hopefully we can support each other and help each other. I wish, I wish, you, you know, wish you guys, you know, our church brothers and sisters all over the world, come together, support each other, work together like a team. I think that's what we should do. Forget about our differences because we're different. God makes us different. I'm not talking about we should, I'm not talking about the bad difference. We should support bad differences. We should not support the bad differences. We should hate sin, but we should love the sinner and we should respect each other and we should accept that we're different. We have God make us with some good differences, you know, and Koreans, they are different, but they're God's people. And, you know, they are my family too. So, so we have to love each other. And love is a thing going to bring us together. And yeah, so yeah, sure. So, so that's my ministry. That's what I want to focus on, you know, okay. learn, I you did, know, the secret of life is to love, to give. Yes. I did share your YouTube channel on, yes. on the, in the, in the comment back. So, so people yes. should be able to go and chat and, yeah. and, and subscribe to your channel as well. Uh, so what you're looking to do is to turn your YouTube channel into where you can speak about the health message and promote that yes, side yes, of the yes. story to Korean people. Uh, that's, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And we are told that the health message is the right hand of the gospel. So if you can get in through the health message, you can eventually share every everything else, which is very, very good. And also oh. one more thing I want to do. You know, um, I I have a farm. The church members, they have in this area, there are many lands. The people, they don't want to farm the land anymore. And many Koreans, they want to live in the city. They don't want to live in the countryside. I live in the countryside here. Wow. But many Koreans, they want to live in the city, not in the countryside. Wow. But but many people, they don't want to do farming anymore. So mm -hmm. the church members, they gave me a land. So I'm just using the land to do farming. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh but, uh, you know, I have the Lord provide a house. I have a house here. Now I'm living by myself, but I wish I could find some people to help. If they're sick, they want to visit Korea, they want to come to Korea. I'm all you know, I could mm -hmm. provide, you know, they could give I could provide a place for them to stay if, if they want to visit Korea. Oh, wow. All right. You know, and learn about the health message naturally without using drugs. If they have disease, I can show them naturally how to get rid of disease. Just for That's the poor, you know, I want to have a ministry where I can help the poor people. That's probably because that. many people think that health is you have to pay lots of money. God has given us the the health message, and it's very it's for the poor people. It's for everybody. Amen. And the things that I see on YouTube, they talk about health. There are some truths, but it's mixed with error. Mm -hmm. And if you don't study the truth, you're not going to tell. You can't tell. But the Lord has been teaching me the health principles. You know, new start. They call it new start. N means nutrition. E mm -hmm. means exercise. W means water. There are some simple things you can do to get rid of many diseases. You know, it is true that one day we must die. I'm not saying that if you follow the health message, you will never die. No. But the Lord in his great mercy has given us the health message that can for the poor people that, you know, it will help us to stay here a little more. Yeah. Right. And people spend so much money. They spend lots of money on health and money and food and nutrition when there are some simple things you can do.
Yep. Yes, and I want to have a, a, a section of my YouTube channel for that to show people. These are things you can do at home. The problem with many people is their will. They're not willing. <laughs> <laughs> the big problem with people is their will. They're not really willing to follow. They rather yeah. pay lots of money, go to hospital, go to sanitarium when they themselves can do it at their home. Yeah, yeah. Somebody so said, that, yes. Brother Everett Miller said, God is, is opening doors, brother. Just remain faithful. Um, and it's true. God is going to use in a powerful way. And I think you should go ahead and start yes. doing exactly what he laid on your heart. Yes. And I can tell you there is a door open here and we definitely want to bring you back again. And you can share some of these tips with us, uh, even if yeah, you yeah. do a health, love that. a health presentation. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm very much open to that. Yeah, because I think I feel like there's so much I could learn when it comes to um, that that side of the the truth. When it comes to evangelism, that has to do with uh, missionary. Uh, what do you call that? Um, uh, gospel you mission. Call it, yeah. Uh, uh, the well, the way you call it, um, yeah. um, the medical missionary work, medical, yeah. missionary, medical work. missionary work is the word I'm looking yes. for. Yeah, medical out. missionary work. Yes. Most significant thing. And it's being said that there's going to come a point where there's no other work that we're going to be able to do, but yes. that work. So it's that something we have, to, we have to be getting involved in that. Uh, and, and you say, if we have a knowledge of the medical missionary, uh, we, we will find work everywhere. Even when yes. everything else, every other doors are closed. But once we have those skills, we found we're going to find work anywhere, even during the time of trouble in the national yeah. cyber and everything. So I think this is a very significant thing. I want to bring you back again where you can share some yeah, tips. Sure. There was a nurse. Let me give you just one example. There was a nurse. She was working in the Seventh Adventist Hospital in Korea in mm -hmm. Busan. She was working in Busan. But I live in the countryside. I don't live in the city. You know, but she was working in the city in in a hospital in a, one of her seventh day adventist hospital in pusan and she was very sick she was very sick and i you know but she likes to study the bible with me she called me early in the morning and we studied the bible together online and then she was very sick so i told her all you need to do is make a special soup because i'm a cook <laughs> i'm a cook too you know i like cooking so i said make this special soup and she followed what i said now i don't want to give myself the glory Give the glory to Jesus. Remember, it's not about me and you. It's about Jesus, right? The Lord. Amen. All glory to Jesus. Every day I have to pray more. Lord, help me. Must, I must remember. Constantly I need to remember to be humble. I need to constantly remember. It's not about me. It's about All glory to Jesus. But the Lord showed me, gave me something. And I told her, make this special soup. She followed the instruction. And she was well. And she said, she told me that her father likes the soup. Crazy. They're Koreans, you know, like that. So yeah. I'm here to help people willingly, freely. I don't charge any money like that. Okay. There are many things you can do, simple things you can do too. Because the time, the time of trouble is going to come upon us. The doctors, they can't help us. They'll, they'll, they're, there will come a time. Drugs will not work. Mm. Mercy. And all those methods not going to work. Mm. But God's simple method, the new start method that God has given us in Genesis 1, verse 29. And then in Genesis chapter 1, all there, all that chapter, it has God's health care plan. It's right there in Genesis chapter 1. Mm -hmm. Right there. Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. That, that's it. That's the one thing I have to say. All right. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm going to have my wife. Thank you so much yes. for, once again, sharing your powerful testimony with us. Um, yes. And uh, I'm gonna have my wife to close for a word of prayer. You and I will yes, talk sure. and we'll schedule next next time you can come on to yes. share some more of that wisdom with us. Okay. Yes. Um, I just want to say thank you so much. It has yes. been such a blessing to hear how God has paved your journey, right? And you are able to share that testimony, and now you're ready to spread that light to others. So yes. thank you so much for sharing, and I look forward to hearing more about your organic farming. Um, I know that that is something our family, like, um, I've, I've been back and forth. I was, I would do the vegan diet for the, at the first of every year, <laughs> the Daniel fast. Yes. And then, um, I was vegetarian for a very long time. And mm -hmm. so in the past few years I have left that and I can be so honest and say like, I cannot call myself a vegetarian at this point. Yes. And I see yes. The difference in mm -hmm. 
everything from the way my body feels, from the way it looks, from all those different yes. components uh, that line up with how we treat our bodies. So yes. it is so important mm -hmm. for us to really get deep into this medical missionary yes. work yes. and to live it, right? Yes. And then we can actually share it with others and be practicing yes. what we preach. And then they right. can see what it is that we're experiencing mm -hmm. and have that better connection mm -hmm. with what yes. we're giving to them by the grace of God. Yes. So I totally look forward to that. And so I thank you very much. And thank you to everyone who's been yes. hanging out with us all this time. It's been such a blessing. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'll go ahead and yeah. pray. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, God, today has been a good, high, and holy Sabbath day. Yes. Father God, not because of anything but you. You have given us the gift of life to wake up on this day, and we are not yes. failing, Lord, to give mm -hmm. you recognition for that. Amen. It's your mercy and your grace, Lord, that has allowed each one of us to be here in this time. Father God, we're coming to you asking that you would forgive us for not giving our whole will over unto you. Yes. And we're asking, dear God, that you would make us yes. willing to be made willing. We yes. come to you, Father, Amen. humbly knowing, dear God, knowing, Lord, that oh, we yes. need you. We need an outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Yes. Of God. We need your spirit, Lord, to teach us yes. these things, to expound them in our minds so that we know how to live from this day forth. Yes. Father God, you've gifted us with the wisdom you've given to Bradley. And now yes. that you've given us through Matthew, Lord. Father yes. God, we are so grateful because, Father, we know, Lord, that yes. you are a blessing for all that you yes. do, Lord, all that you have given unto us, O oh God. Father, yes. right now, Lord, I just ask that you would bless Matthew in a special way. Yes. Father, he is asking, Lord, for more sanatoriums, Lord. Father God, he's asking for his organic farming, Lord, to be able to serve others, Lord. He's yes. asking, dear God, for his YouTube channels, O oh God his YouTube channels, Lord, to be able to, sh to teach others more than English, Lord, mm. to teach them your gospel, to teach them your will for their life, to teach them, Lord, about what it is that you want for them and healing and medical missionary work. Father God, you know everything that his heart desires. I only yes. know a portion. He wants to preach the three angels message, Lord. Mm. Father God, he wants to be a servant of you, oh God. Yes. Father, you are the only one he wants to be in bondage to. You are yes. the only one, Lord, he wants to receive yes. so much of your love and be in that yes. perfect relationship so that he can continue to extend that to others. Yes. Father God, I'm asking that your Holy Spirit would reign upon him, upon all of his desires yes. and plans. You said, delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto him. Trust also yes. in him and he yes. shall bring it to pass and he shall yes. bring forth thy righteousness as the noonday. Father God, Lord, you know the rest of that. Father God, we are asking for you to proliferate this promise in his life. Yes. Father, you said, I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you should go. I will guide yes. you with mine eye. Amen. Father God, teach him, show him, instruct him. Yes. And continue to keep him at the foot of your cross, Lord. Father God, where he may obtain grace and mercy and find favor yes. in his great times of need. And Father God, in all things, Lord, I pray that you would bless him. Father, yes. I pray that you would bless everyone who is here listening right now. Yes. They all have their different desires. They all are at their different levels, Lord. Father God, I yes. pray that you would just open up their minds to receive all of you. And the key that we have talked about, Lord, relationship. May each person under the sound of this voice, Lord, go into a deeper relationship with you, knowing yes. your words in John 29, 11, that say, Father God, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Yes. Talk of peace and not of evil to give you hope and a future. Father God, I pray, dear Lord, that they would know that your thoughts towards them are all good and that if yes. they just give themselves to you as they are today, Lord, there is nothing that you will keep from them, nothing you won't yes. change for them, nothing you won't do for them. And just allow them, Lord, to know that you are with them always, even until the end of the ages. Yes. Father God, we give you honor, glory, and praise because you love every person. And yes. Father God, just allow us, give us that will to receive your love and the blessing yes. of the Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. God bless you guys. God bless yes. you. God bless Matthew. Yeah. God bless you once yes. again. Thank you for hanging out with yes. us. Yes.
Hope you guys so, had a yeah. to the Lord and we'll, we'll stay. Yes. <laughs> okay. You too. All right. All right. God, God bless, bless you, everyone. Have a good one. Okay. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.